right, so here we go with our notes today. Um, today's not too bad, as you can see up there. Um, oh, yeah, let me pause this before I... Okay, so here we go. Um, we did addition and subtraction last week. Um, today we're going to do multiplying and dividing with real numbers. Okay, our definitions that we have today, reciprocal. Okay, take any number and flip it, that is the reciprocal. Yeah. Gotta have it down for your notes. Why do we do that? Why do we flip it over? What when, when can you can you think of a time when you do that? Yes. When you divide by a fraction, you do that. There is another time that you do that when you're solving an equation that has a fraction in that you want to get rid of. And the reason you do that, because the other part of a reciprocal or the important fact of a reciprocal is any number multiplied by its reciprocal is one. So if we're trying to get x by itself to get one x we have a fraction in front we multiply it by its reciprocal to make that one x that's how you solve when you have a fractional that when you have x as a fraction we'll be doing that in more detail later but that is the important step for doing it and that is that is the you know with the reciprocals that is what they are when you multiply two numbers together you get one they are reciprocals Okay. Formulas and properties. This is the important thing when you're multiplying and dividing real numbers. The rules are slightly different than they are for addition and subtraction. Multiplying and dividing is actually easier. If I multiply two positive numbers, my answer is positive. If I multiply a positive and a negative, my answer is negative. If I multiply two negatives, my answer is positive. If the signs are the same, your answer is positive. If the signs are different, your answer is negative. It's easy as that. Okay, when you multiply or you divide, you do the multiplication, you do the division, and then assign the sign as appropriate. That's what I do. Okay. Or you can figure out the sign first, like, oh, those two, I got a negative and a positive, my answer is negative, and then multiply the two numbers. Okay? So it's actually really easy. If the signs are the same, it's positive, the signs are different, it's negative. Questions on that? And hopefully you've seen this before, this is not new. Okay, so problem multiplying real numbers. So. First one, 12 times negative 8. So the first thing I want to do is I have a positive times a negative. My answer is going to be what? Positive or negative? It's going to be negative. And then you multiply 12 times 8, which is 96. Twenty-four times 0 0.05. I have two positives. My answer positive or negative? Positive. And then 0 0.05, that's one half, right? So it's half of 24. 12. I got two dozen eggs. I had half of them. That means I have one dozen eggs left. And I'm really sick. Okay, and then fractions. Well, actually, multiplying fractions is the easiest thing to do with fractions. By far and away, the easiest thing to do. First thing though, I have a negative and a negative. Two negatives mean my answer is going to be positive. So I'm going to have a positive answer. We don't necessarily have to write that, but I'm just doing it to kind of emphasize the point. You don't have to do that on your work. And then multiplying fractions. This time your denominators do change because you just multiply straight across. Three times one is three. Four times two is eight. Half of three fourths is three eighths. Okay. 
questions so far? Fairly straightforward, fairly simple, I think. I hope. I hope, I hope, I hope. Okay. Simplifying square root expressions. So I like this problem. So I have negative square root of 25. My negative is outside the square root, so that's okay. What that means is my answer is going to be negative. And I have to figure out what's the square root of 25. Okay, square root, when I take the square root of a number, I want to know what number times itself gives me that. So what number times itself gives me 25? 5. So the square root of 25 is 5. Okay. Square roots of fractions. Students often freak out when they see square roots of fractions. It's not that big a deal. Um, there's two things going on with this problem, though, I want to point, bring your attention to. First one is this symbol that's out in front. It has a positive and a negative. This is plus or minus. That means I need to consider the positive answer and the negative answer both. Plus or minus, that's how we say it, it's plus or minus. Okay, and we need to consider both possibilities. So actually, technically, I have two numbers, positive whatever and negative whatever. Okay, when you see the plus or minus, it means I'm dealing with two numbers, two numbers. Okay. And then the square root of a fraction is actually really easy. Because what you do is, you take the square root of the numerator, and the square root of the denominator. You don't do the whole fraction at once, you split it up into the two parts. Square root of the numerator, square root of the denominator. So I have plus or minus. What's the square root of 4? 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. What's the square root of 49? 7. 7 times 7 is 49. 2 7 so my answer is plus or minus two-sevenths. So technically, you don't need to necessarily put this down, but you do need to understand that I have positive two-sevenths and negative two-sevenths. I have two answers. That's what that means. I have two answers. Plus two-sevenths, negative two-sevenths. Plus or minus. Okay. That will pop up from time to time. Problem number three, dividing real numbers. A skydiver's elevation changes by 3,600 feet in four minutes after the parachute opens. What is the elevation change in each minute? How much does his elevation change each minute? Okay, so if it takes four minutes to go 3,600 feet, how many feet do we go in one minute? So what I do is I take 3,600 and divide that by 4. Or I can write that as 3,600 over 4. Either way. But that's what that means. Okay. Now, so doing it long division because sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's not. 4 goes into, th 4 can't go into 3, right? So we go 4 into 36. How many times does 4 go into 36? 9 times. 9 times 4 is 36. 9 times, I get 36. Subtract, I get 0. Bring down my other zeros. So my answer is 900. Now, that's the change. Is he going up or going down? Hey, skydivers. Do skydivers go up once they jump out of the plane? Once they jump out, do they go up? No, they go down. They may change speed. But they go down. So his change every minute is negative 900 feet. Yeah, they go up while, they get, while they're in the plane until they jump out. Once they jump out, they don't go back up. They might go at different speeds, but they never go up. Okay. Dividing fractions. The rule for dividing fractions. Okay. So I have it written in two different ways. Three-fourths divided by two-thirds. Three-fourths divided by third, two-thirds. The rule for dividing fractions is invert and multiply. 
So you flip one of the fractions and then you multiply the fractions. That's why division is the second easiest thing to do. Easiest thing to do is multiply fractions. Second easiest is divide because you do one thing and then you multiply. Okay. Which fraction do I invert, first or second? Second. Second one. Always the second fraction. You never change the first one. It's always three-fourths. The first one doesn't change. Take the second one and invert it, and then multiply. Is my answer going to be positive or negative? Positive, because I got two positives. And then you multiply fractions, just multiply. Three times three is nine. Four times two is eight. I prefer improper fractions 99% of the time. When you're doing algebra, when you're solving equations, when you're just doing something like this, this is fine. The only time I want a mixed number is if you're solving a word problem. Ooh, I have nine-eighths of a pizza. That doesn't make sense. But one and one-eighth pizzas does. But if I'm doing things algebraically, as far as I'm concerned, improper fractions are just fine. I only might, because working with mixed numbers is very difficult to do. They should only be your final answer. They should not be any other part of what you're doing. And realistically, just leave it like that. Because if you change it, you might make a mistake and lose a point. If you take a good answer and make it a bad answer, you lose a point. Okay, does that make sense? Any questions? Easy day today.